After studying this module, you shall be able to know what is clinical psychology, learn about the various specializations, identify future possibilities, know about their history and development. Introduction Clinical psychology is a branch of the field of psychology. There are several specializations that can be branched out of clinical psychology itself. Clinical psychology is one of the specializations in psychology field which makes up the major part of psychology. Clinical psychologists or clinicians are ones who deal with the diagnosis of mental disorders and also treating them. Psychological disorders take a lot of assessment before the correct or appropriate treatment is provided. Thus, clinical psychologists or psychiatrists have a lot of experience in the area of various kinds of therapies and the diagnostic criteria for every disorder. These psychologists are commonly found in working places such as hospitals, private clinics or healthcare centers. Clinical psychologists may work in a general field, working with all types of populations and psychological disorders, whereas some may only specialize in treating specific kinds or types of psychological disorders. For example, some clinical psychologists may be working in hospitals in the area of neuropsychology and looking at the patients with brain injuries, whereas some clinical psychologists may work at health centers with people and families who need counseling for patients with substance or drug abuse problems. Some clinical psychologists may also sit in their private clinics and take personal sessions with the clients. There are a lot of tasks a clinical psychologist has to deal with. These tasks involve tests being conducted on the patients including intelligence, personality, aptitude tests, etc. Interviewing the patient as well as the family, history taking, performing various types of therapies which may help the patient and following up with the patient. There are number of specialities within the clinical psychology. These include health psychology, forensic psychology, counseling psychology, psychotherapy, community and neuropsychology. Next we have a section which talks about specializations in clinical psychology. Number one is health psychology. Health psychology is a special term in the field of psychology. This field of psychology deals with the enhancement and betterment of health. It uses several concepts of psychology in order to prevent and treat health issues. It is somewhat similar to community psychology wherein the improvement of the healthcare system is taken care of and the creation of awareness within the common population is spread. In the past, philosophers believed that the mind and body were the same system rather than seeing them as two separate systems. Thus, it was believed that the diseased person was basically possessed by an evil spirit who had taken over the body. Many rituals were done to get rid of the so-called evil spirit. In the beginning of Renaissance, a whole new shift was seen in the beliefs of the common man. They started to see the use of medicine in the treatment of several diseases. Anwar and Alexander's work in 1950 helped in the shaping of the field of psychosomatic medicine. This was basically given to the people suffering from psychosomatic disorders, that is, disorders or bodily problems caused due to the emotional disturbances such as ulcer, colitis, bronchial asthma and many more. There is thus an importance to have sufficient understanding of the health of oneself and, and also to help others to stay healthy. This cannot be possible without the knowledge of psychological and social factors. It is clear that mind-body relationship concept plays a vital role in the development of the field of health psychology. Health psychologists deal with the patients who are in substance or drug abuse. Patients like them are prone to acquire several psychological disorders. Other than that, health psychologists take care of good health of patients. They organize programs in order to motivate people to stop or quit smoking or drinking or lose weight. The main task of health psychologists is to help people understand that bad health can affect the human being in several ways. For example, eating junk and avoiding outdoor activities is harmful for body, 
and that may lead to obesity which may further affect the social life of the individual leaving him lonely and depressed similarly taking a lot of stress can lead to smoking drinking which may become a habit and later a problem or addiction therefore it is important for a person to understand that it is a two way street psychological factors may lead to health problems and health problems may lead to psychological problems there are several ways in which health psychology helps the population or the common man these include it helps in assessing and identifying the faulty behavior of the person with the help of various techniques which help the people to avoid illness and bad health it also helps the people to stay healthy and safe rather than getting ill and then getting treatment done health psychology has been helpful because it has taken several years and experience to come up with reliable and valid measures for the assessment of the health related factors it has contributed to the scientific field very useful and solid methods for studying such behaviors health psychology has contributed to the scientific field as a very useful and solid method for studying such behaviors next field of clinical psychology we have is forensic psychology forensic psychology deals with the two fields that are psychology and law forensic psychologists deal with all the psychological services that need to be provided to the legal community these psychologists are experienced and trained in the field of assessment testing diagnosis and treatment of all types of patients with any psychological problems forensic psychologists deal with criminals who may have been provided with insanity plea insanity plea is a term that is used by the court when the person who has committed the crime has been diagnosed with a psychological illness such criminals are provided with insanity plea and are kept in separate environment whether treated but are not punished in the same way as the other criminals Forensic psychology is a discipline which has gained significance very lately. Not many people know that in the 44 BC, Julius Caesar's death was caused not due to 23 wounds, but the one wound which proved to be fatal for him. If the law and order did not take the help of a physician, it would not have been possible to find out who murdered him. Thus, even in those times, law took help of the medicine to solve several cases like this. One of the very first psychologists, William Stern, in 1901, did a study on memory and came up with the idea of eyewitness testimony. The findings of the study mark the beginning of forensic psychology. Many years later, Hugo Munsterberg wrote a book in this year, 1908, named as On the Witness Stand, talking about all the critics and flaws in William Stern's study. Psychologists in this field are experienced and well read in the clinical field as well as the law field. For example, a psychologist is providing clinical treatment or playing role of the clinical psychologist when he or she is trying to help the patient or treat him to deal with the traumatizing effect of the accident. On the other hand, if the psychologist is asked to make a detailed report of the whole accident that took place, then he or she is playing the role of a forensic psychologist and helping the law there are several tasks a forensic psychologist does these tasks involve issues of divorced parents to gain custody of the child claiming insurance some psychologists work for civil courts family courts criminal courts also forensic psychologists also deal with cases which require any type of therapies this can include sexually harassed children divorced couples children who have been abused juvenile delinquents visiting rehabilitation centers and counseling people there etc those working in the civil courts often assess competency provide second opinions and provide psychotherapy to the crime victims professionals working in the criminal courts conduct evaluation of mental competency work with child witnesses and provide assessment of the juvenile and adult offenders in today's time Forensic psychology has gained a lot of popularity and importance in several areas. Thus, American Psychological Association in the year 2001 put forward forensic psychology as a specialization in psychology. The next field of clinical psychology that we discuss is counseling. 
Counseling as we all know is a very commonly used term in the field of psychology. It is more or less similar to psychotherapy. Both counseling and psychotherapy are a specialization of clinical psychology. Counseling is conducted or provided to people in the need of support to solve their life problems. The people who are unable to cope up with their problems or stress seek help from a counselor. The Society of Counseling Psychology describes the field as a psychological speciality that facilitates personal and interpersonal functioning across the lifespan with a focus on emotional, social, vocational, educational, health related, developmental and organizational concerns. In our day to day lives we have been counseled several times sometimes by our friends, sometimes by our parents and grandparents etc. There has not been much history to counseling and psychotherapy but in the past when someone was diagnosed with a mental disorder of any kind he was taken to the priest or the church because it was believed that they were possessed by an evil spirit. At the beginning of the 18th and 19th century the industrial revolution brought it with many scientific concepts which reduced or lessened the importance of the priests. The common man believed that there may be a much more logical explanation and more procedural methodology to treat these disorders. Sigmund Freud was one of the pioneers to introduce the hypnosis techniques which was used a lot in 19th century. Carl Rogers, Albert Ellis, Eric Byrne and Abraham Maslow were some other psychologists who had a completely different perspective than Freud. There are several types of counselors including family counselors, child counselors or therapists etc. The basic task of a counselor is to deal with people and help them to overcome the difficult situation they are presently in. Therapists on the other hand deal with patients who are suffering from psychological disorders or illness. Psychotherapy is another specialization which will be talked about in the next section ahead. The work setting of a counselor can be in schools, clinics, hospitals, NGOs, healthcare center etc. Counselors can be approached with any type of problems. These problems must be of the intensity that they interfere with the individual's daily functioning. A counselor must be aware and well rehearsed with various types of psychotherapies including cognitive, behavioral, humanistic, existential and psychoanalytical psychotherapy. The various techniques that are used in dealing with the various day to day issues are very important. The counselor must have sufficient experience in the field of clinical psychology so that he is ready and prepared for any kind of patients. The counselor has several qualities which include empathy, unconditional positive regard, listening skills, genuineness, educational qualifications etc. The next section that we have is psychotherapy. Psychotherapy is one of the most important specialization of clinical psychology because it deals with the most major part of what clinical psychology is made of. The psychological disorders of any kind and of any age groups are dealt by the psychotherapies. Psychotherapies commonly and mostly work in hospital settings. The main tasks of the psychotherapist are to assess the patient to conduct various tests, diagnose the disorder and then to treat the patient with whatever type of medication and psychotherapeutic treatment is required. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the Middle Ages moved back to their beliefs in the supernatural powers causing the mental illness rather than medical causes and the tortures to remove demonic possessions were restarted. Paracelsus in 1493 to 1541 was the first to advocate psychotherapy for treatment of the insane. There were scattered references about the importance of talking in the treatment of the several problems including emotional problems. At that time an English psychiatrist named Walter Cooper Dendy was the first one to introduce the term psychotherapia in 1853. There is a major difference between psychotherapy and counseling. The first and the most important difference is a psychotherapy deals with the patients with much serious problems than counseling does. The emotional depth in psychotherapy is much more than in counseling. 
Thus a person suffering from a mental disorder cannot be taken to a counsellor because he or she is less experienced and does not have the qualification to treat a patient. Another difference between the two is that their theoretical foundation and historical origins differ to a large extent. There are various types of psychotherapies. Number one, psychoanalytical therapy. Two, behavioral therapy. Three, cognitive behavioral therapy. Four, humanistic therapy. Five, existential therapy. Six, objection relation therapy. Seven, family therapy. Eight, interpersonal therapy. Nine, group therapy. And there are many more. The next field that we are going to discuss under clinical psychology is community psychology. It is often thought and believed that most of the time and most of the researches and findings have been conducted in the laboratory settings. But it is the other way around. The psychologists spend most of their time and work in the natural settings. The common man feels more connected to those psychologists who work in a natural setting. Out of all the specializations of clinical psychology, community psychology is the most natural in public and community oriented specialization. Community psychology is majorly concerned with the relationship between the individual's well-being and the community or the society as a whole. The main task of the community psychologist is to check out and keep track of the mental health status of a particular community and to help them out. Intervention and awareness programs are organized by these psychologists who help the community as a whole. The field of community psychology has gained a lot of significance recently and is still in the process of rapid development. There are several ways in which community psychology differs from the other specializations of psychology. The first point is that the community psychologists make use of the theoretical as well as the practical or applied knowledge of psychological concepts in the environment or society around them. The second point is that they do not only focus on each individual's mental health but they focus on the society and the people living in a society as a whole. They formulate intervention programs for a group rather than an individual per se. The third point is that the role of a community psychologist is varied. That is, a community psychologist may be working in a court setting one day and in a hospital setting on another day. Community psychologists work in a number of ways, for example, providing special training to parents with children who have behavioral problems or are intellectually weak. Community psychologists also put up campaigns and intervention programs for substance and drug abusers. Community psychologists are unique in their own way because they are clinical psychologists as well as social psychologists. They are completely in touch with the human beings and also with the environment they are living in. The main reason why the community psychology arose as a much more identified and trusted field is because the community psychologists reach out to all kinds of communities and all the people who are in need. The main motto of community psychology is that prevention is better than cure. Community psychologists must wear many masks in order to handle the different types of communities. Some more tasks of the community psychologists are to help in promoting individual growth, also in preventing the society's mental health problems before they occur. To send help or any form of intervention whenever or wherever it is required. Whether the help is required in an urban or in a rural locality. Whether the help is required in a low socioeconomic society or a high socioeconomic society. To provide awareness and education to the people who are unaware of the importance of mental health and also to take care of the person in that case. Community psychology is not one of the professions someone would like to enter right away. But once an individual enters and learns about the various tasks and responsibilities the community psychologist handle, it sure becomes a very interesting and important aspect for the field of psychology and the society also. Community psychology incorporates the responsibilities and work of a clinical psychologist, social psychologist, counselors, as well as the psychotherapist. 
The next subfield under clinical psychology we are going to discuss is neuropsychology. Neuropsychology basically is the study of the complex functioning of the brain to find out its effects on the behavior of the individual. It studies the relationship between the brain functions and the behavior. Neuropsychology has been a study that has been practiced for several years. In the ancient times, people who were considered to be experienced in these procedures used to perform a surgical procedure named as trephination, in which they used to drill or cut some of the bone out of the skull. They believed that by doing so, the extra pressure of the blood causing the stress in the brain will be released, leading to the betterment of the patient. Over several BCs and later years, many philosophers and experimenters such as Aristotle, Edmund Smith Papyrus, Pythagoras, Descartes and many more conducted experiments on animals and human beings and came up with a number of theories which were countless and infinite. The mind-body relationship had always been in controversy too. In the 19th century, a doctor named as Broca found out with the help of one of his patients and many more that the left frontal lobe was responsible for the individual's language speaking skills. After Broca came, many more such doctors and researchers who made discoveries that has become an integral part of the science in today's time. Neuropsychologists come across patients who have had a brain injury or an accident in which the person has had an internal brain injury. These psychologists then administer intellectual or personality tests on the patient which helps them to know the current status of the patient. They then interview and talk to the family of the patient in order to find out what the patient's personality and behavior was before the accident. The neuropsychologist will also talk to the school or college authorities and find out whether there has been any change in the patient's behavior ever since the accident has taken place. The major task is of identifying the severity of the injury and its consequences. Thus, the neuropsychologist discusses the case with the experienced doctors also. The neuropsychologist also deals with the patients with issues of brain lesions, lateralization, localization and cerebral lesions. Brain injury is not just a physiological trauma, it can also have several cognitive and behavioral effects. The cognitive and behavioral changes in the individual can lead to psychological and emotional variations altogether. There are some symptoms associated or linked to the neurological damage and injuries, which may be as impaired memory. There may be some sort of damage to the memory of the patient where he may forget recent information, personal information or events that may have taken place in the past. After the accident or with brain injury, one may also have impaired orientation, that is, inability to remember basic information, for example, forgetting someone's name or unable to remember the day or month. Then one may have problem in the judgment, which we may call as impaired judgment. The patient is unable to make important decisions and the problem solving ability of the patient weakens, which may include the impairment in the special intellectual abilities such as comprehension, mathematical, logical, general knowledge skills, etc. One may also face lack or loss of emotional resilience. In such a case, the patient may function well in comfortable situations, but the moment the stressful situation comes along, the patient panics and there may be deterioration in all other skills of the patient. Another consequence of any brain injury or accident that may have caused any lesion may be shallow and labile affect. Here the patient cries or laughs very easily and frequently touches lows and highs of emotions. In simple words, the patient is always on the edge of his emotions. Now we are going to have a look on the summary of this entire module. Clinical psychology is one of the specialization in psychology fields which makes up the major part of the psychology. Clinical psychologists or clinicians are ones who deal with the diagnosis of mental disorders and also treating them. Health psychology is a special term in the field of psychology. This field basically deals with the enhancement and betterment of health. 
It uses several concepts of psychology in order to prevent and treat health issues. Forensic psychology deals with the two fields that are psychology and law. Forensic psychologists deal with all the psychological services that need to be provided to the legal community. Counseling is conducted or provided to the people in need of support to solve their life problems. The people who are unable to cope with their problems or stress and seek help from the counselor. Psychotherapy is another specialization in which the psychological disorders of any kind and of any age groups are dealt by the psychotherapists. Community psychology is another subfield of clinical psychology which is majorly concerned with the relationship between the individual's well-being and the community or the society. Neuropsychology is basically the study of complex functioning of the brain to find out its effect on behavior of the individual. It studies the relationship between the brain functions and the behavior.